So good afternoon. Am I audible? Yeah, clear, loud and clear. So good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. We had good lunch, right? Yeah. Nobody is sleepy now, are we? No. Nice. Okay. So we're going to start the session. I'll just introduce myself. I'm Shilpa Sahani, and I have done merchandising for 12 years. And now I'm teaching at Institute of Apparel Management. I have been in Hog School for Amsterdam as well. So I worked with Willem Conner for five years. And then I decided to see the other side of the business. That's when I decided to go to Amsterdam and study, do my international fashion management there. I worked as a buyer over there and then came back, joined a Dutch firm. Then I was running my own image, uh, my own buying house. Now I run my own image consultancy as well as I teach merchandising with Institute of Apparel Management. So this is about me and uh, so I can totally relate to what you all go through when we do merchandising, right? Lab dip approvals, the deliveries, the sampling, isn't it like, oh god, how much you have to go through, right? And the deadline, if you don't make the samples on time, it's going to go to somebody else. You know, the sword is always hanging on us, isn't it? So thank you so much for taking out time from this busy, 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 busy schedule and coming here. And I really want to acknowledge all the people who wrote in all the inquiries and all the um, queries and all the concerns that they deal with in day to do merchandising. So all of you guys who actually told us about their challenges that they deal with, thank you so much for giving us all the information. So I think, I have a feeling that we all are a little quiet right now. I can't hear too much happening. So we're going to start this session with a video, which is going to wake everybody up, you know, which is going to give us a lot of information, a lot of facts, which we all know about, which is, we'll just see this video, yeah? To wake you guys up and me. <laughs>
Great. So are we all wide awake now? Are we all here? Great. So all the smart people. Haven't we become all really very smart now after technology has come? Do, you all call ourselves, do we all call ourselves smart merchandisers who are technologically enabled? So when I say technology, what comes to your mind? All the knowledge. All the knowledge. Yeah. When I say WhatsApp? Gossip. Gossip? Okay. When I say samples? <laughs> Superb. So, and when I say shipment? Huh? Delayed. All the time delayed. Hai na? What fun. What fun. Huh? Before time? Hore? Superb. Superb. So, that's what I want to hear all the time, right? Uh, Facebook. Chatting. Very <laughs> friends. Fit. Fit. So something. Sorry? Gymnastics. Gymnastics. Okay. Superb. Yeah. Somebody not from the garment, uh, this thing, no? feel right. Delivery. On time. On time. Extension. And when I say Twitter? Follow us. Do you know we are tweeting right now? Are we on Twitter already, right? Yes. So, you know, we are digitally connected with you all 15 days before the workshop. So, we realized when we got this whole uh, topic to talk about, we realized, oh, Google is going to help us. But in the end, there was nothing on Google. Nothing on smart merchandising, B2B, was not there. And then we had to sit down together, get all, did all the research work. I interviewed a lot of um, uh, merchandisers in different export houses. I got feedback from you all. Deepak is a technology guy. Manka is another friend of mine who was completely into technology. Then we all sat down together and prepared this presentation for you all. So, I don't know, do you remember those black plastic boxes which had tape inside? The videotapes? Do you remember using them? Hana? So, we are in the same generation, right? Okay, so those videotapes and connecting the computer with the wire and with the phone. Right? The internet was coming through phone during that time. And I remember when I was doing my projects, I used to go sit in the cyber cafes, you know, to do my project. And then I had to really beg, plead my dad, you know, get me a computer. And it took 15 days for somebody to assemble that computer. And when it came, it was a big monitor, big scanner, big printer. It was a huge thing. And then the modem, then the phone wire had to be connected. We had to really make big place for that computer to come, right? And we have really like small iPads now. And uh, then the drawer full of floppies. Do we all remember the floppies? And now we have the small USBs, portable hard disks. I don't know where have we reached. Did we expect iPad to be there? Did we ever think something like iPad is going to be here? I could not. My two-year-old son can e easily access the iPad. I know that. And it takes a while for me to get into it. You know, I'm not technologically savvy completely. So iPad came into existence, then the internet, the cyber cafe, and now we have 3G, we are moving to 4G, we are even moving to LTE, the long term evolution, that's where we are really moving. So are we really moving with time? This Google search. So this is really funny, okay, so we had this project on H&M and Carrefour. I had to go to the embassy to find information about the country, go to the company's uh, uh, buying house to get the information about the company and, uh, you know, put everything together. It took 20 days. I wish I had Google at that time. I would have had my project ready in two days. And then in the end, hard disk crashed completely. I said, now I would do 30% less in my marks because the marketing teacher was really, really strict, right? So 30% less. I didn't have iCloud. Two days back, in fact, when I was preparing for this presentation, uh, what happened was this, um, I left my charger in the office. I reached home and then I realized I don't have a charger. How do I proceed further? And suddenly I realized my iPad my Apple computer and my phone, they're all synced. So I had all the information on my phone. Isn't it really fast? Aren't we moving really fast? Did we expect anything like that 10 years back? We did not. We really never thought. In fact, we all were connected through WhatsApp for this whole presentation preparation and everything. We're moving very, very fast. YouTube, Yammer, we have everything on our phone nowadays. Daily motion. Anybody can get 15 minutes of fame through this technology. And I remember uh, in the year 2000, when I joined Willemi Corner, we had those big cameras with the floppies. We used to click the pictures, send the pictures to the buyers. And sometimes the QC would go to the inspection to the factory. And if it was a Friday evening, we are dead. Because he would invariably call up at 4.30, the shipment is rejected. I can't let it go. 
And you know, you don't know what to do at that point of time. You're waiting for the samples to come to the office on Monday, you review it, and then you see if it's commercially acceptable, you let it go. If it's not, then you wait to send it to the buyer, the buyer will receive on Friday, Wednesday, Thursday he will review, then you'll get the answer on Friday. And then who's going to ship the air, the goods? Obviously the vendor in India, obviously the vendor, the vendor has to air the goods then. So now I really wish we had FaceTime that time. He could have easily shown me everything on a FaceTime and we would have probably taken a decision in two hours, which took one week. Do you all do that? Do you all use WhatsApp? You are using WhatsApp, FaceTime, Skype, video conferencing. Because, you know, I was interviewing somebody in Orchid overseas. So she said, now when my runner goes to the uh, market, he's clicking all the pictures of the prints, the accessories, the trims. And then what I do is I get the uh, pictures, I give it to my buying agent in the impulse. And then he reviews that and then he says, okay, fine. And then only the runner comes back. That's pretty good. Whereas Pearl Global, I interview, interviewed the merchandisers over there. They said, we're not using it. And we are constantly struggling. There's no runner. Runner hota hi nika bibi. Jabhi hum dhoondra hota runner nia. Because why aren't you giving the WhatsApp to him? Why aren't we giving a 3G technology to the runner? So that he can click the pictures and send it to us. I'm not talking about the color approvals. I'm just talking about the trims, accessories, which can be easily you done with this technology. Do we know about smart trolleys? Has anybody heard about smart trolleys? So Walmart and... Uh, Metro, there are two suppliers already working on smart trolleys. And smart trolleys are normal trolleys, but they have scanners on it. So what happens when the customer walks in, you, all, you scan your card, you get the six month history, how you have shopped, what all you have shopped. So six months complete history comes in that scanner. And when you're shopping, they keep telling you, this is what you bought last time, this is what you, and this is what is on discount, all the information is given on the scanner. We're really moving there. You get all the information there and then when you're scanning the goods, they also give you the recipe of the stuff that you bought and how you can mix and match two different products and make it. Do you know Intel scientists are right now making the mirrors, the high-tech mirrors, when the consumer is going to stand in front of that mirror, you can scan your whole body and they can tell you what garment will look nice on you. You touch and the whole garment you can see on that. It's not far away. It's just three to five years away. We are just three to five. Digital fitting rooms are coming into existence. Just three to five years, we'll have digital fitting rooms. I don't think we'll have place for the printers, the yarn suppliers or anything. It'll be all done digitally. The big boxes, uh, Best Buy, Old Navy, they are going to be replaced by really, really small uh, houses, which will be only to touch and feel. So all the consumers are going to go to these places, they're going to touch and feel, and then order the garment that they like, which will be delivered to them. The UPS and FedEx is going to be doing the refrigerator delivery. There will be Google trucks who will be delivering everything. The whole face and face of retail industry is going to change. Are we ready for that? So next five years, next 10 years of retail industry will be like, will be more than last 100 years that we saw. Did we ever expect e-tailing to pick up so fast? We didn't expect that e-tailing or everything is going to go so fast. We really didn't expect. But it has started moving very, very fast. I'll show you this video again. We have another video coming up.
Yeah, I think I'll do that. Yeah, it's better now. Okay, super. Great. So, uh, you know, Zara is making 12,000 styles a year. Topshop is making 300 styles per week. And Zara is getting all the information about the stores, about the new styles from 246 stores. Do you know that? Because they're technically so well equipped that they're getting information about the customer. The customer is changing really fast. The shelf life, which used to be six months, around 10 years back, has become a few weeks now. So we need to work really fast. Yeah? Are we all equipped for that? Are we really equipped to cater to something like this? That's the question. The whole idea of behind showing this video was that we need to just get up. We need to pull up our socks and be matching this, right? <clears throat> so the whole workshop is going to go like this. We are going to address the basic problems of, in the functions of merchandising, which you all uh, talked about. And then we'll tell you digital tools which are currently available in the market to solve those problems to an extent. I am, may not be able to help you with color matching, but there's certain digital tool, tools which are available, which can help you, pro, you know, speed up your sampling process. Uh, those are the tools I'm going to talk about. And then obviously we'll have Q&A session. So I want you to write down all the questions that you have. We will address them one by one after the session, yeah? So what is smart merchandising according to you? So let's start thinking. What is smart merchandising? Anybody? Proactive. Yeah. Proactive. Superb. Anything else that comes to your mind? Sorry? Right first time. Right first time. Who was that? Who was that? Okay. Great. Fantastic. Anybody else? Excellence. Excellence. Great. Quick decisions. Yeah. Bang on. Efficient with efficiency, great. Anybody else? So when I have to teach by the book, what I tell my students is to deliver the right products, right time, right place, the right price, and the right quantity, and the right quality, right? Which is, sounds so good, no? But are we able to achieve that? That's the whole idea. But obviously, there are a lot of struggles, a lot of ups and downs that we need to deal with to deliver this. A smart merchandiser is a merchandiser who evolves with time, who thinks like a buyer. It's very important for us to start thinking just the way our client is thinking, just the way consumer is thinking. Once we can do that, then we are on the same level. Then we don't have any communication problems. And then we can deliver real time without wasting any time with full integrity, work in the most efficient manner, of course, and foresee the problems and foresee the changes that we're expecting in the industry. So we already, I, this is a smart trolley I was talking to you all about. You know, this is how it's going to look like. Walmart and Metro are getting in already. These are the tools which we are currently using in the industry, garment industry, which is internet, emails, websites, video conferencing, apps, social media platform, blogs, CAD, CAM, ERP, virtual prototyping, RFID, and e-commerce. So as I already discussed, we were connected to you 15 days before the workshop so that we are not wasting your time here. We are actually addressing all the issues that you are dealing with through technology, right? And right now we are already on Twitter. So you can send in all the uh, concerns and the questions on the Twitter as well. So what we did is we found out information. Uh, we realized, uh, we made the whole graph of all the concerns and the challenges which you all sent to us. So maximum issues were with sourcing, then sampling, production, and communication. Okay, so we received concerns from Mr. Surinder Kumar Kohli. Is he here? Is Mr. Surinder here? Yeah. Can you please talk about your concern? I think, can we have a mic here? Is this working? Yeah, okay. Why don't you talk about your concern yourself? That would be good. Yeah, you please tell us. Yes, yes, yes. Right. All the mills and everything sourcing, we have so we are we are we have to source this all the sources are old. They're old, nobody, huh? Nobody wants to uh, introduce new, new things. Right. We have to go to China or Turkey, else. yeah. And that that's is expensive. The that's the main thing. Right. Great. Thank you so much. Let's acknowledge him. Yeah, at least uh, we are coming up with these solutions. 
Miss Reena Singh from Blessing Exports. Are you here? Yeah. Please. Pricing. In sourcing, pricing for the fabric. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Reena, for sharing with us. Thanks a lot. Let's acknowledge everybody. Yeah. Please. Let's. So, Sanjay Singh uh, from Saiwana Exports. Are you here, Sanjay? Please. Maybe you can talk about because you know I'm sure we all have the same concerns. You know, we all are in the same uh, situation. You're not getting the stuff on time. Prices are high. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sanjay. We had more problems that we got information on. Miss Renu Dube with the, from Foyerari Creations. Is she here? Miss yeah. Renu? Yes, please, please. We have a lot of beading issues, uh, especially falling beads and uh, uh, breakage in beads. And because of beads, there is a lot of fabric is uh, tearing and everything. So we have a lot of beading problem. And we do manage to get good beaders. But unfortunately, they have this loose beading coming out. That is there. But aren't we using this good thread quality? No, we that's not helping. We use the best possible quality, quotes huh. per thread we are huh. using. Huh. But despite, despite that, we are, okay. we are using a pick and all that. But so still, it's not happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is the basic. We are dealing in high fashion garments. High fashion garments. And obviously, we get stuck at the mm -hmm. last moment. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, I don't have a digital tool for that actually. Honestly, for okay. this is more <laughs> hand oriented. <laughs> I'm sure we will have it another three, four years. Trust me, the way we are moving. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Reno. Mr. Ajay Opal, is he here? Please, please, please. Right. Lab dipping, sourcing uh, the kind of drinks that they are uh, you know, wanting us to use, the standards that we need to maintain. They are expecting. So that's all eating up uh, into our time. Right. Got so it. Got it. Increases. Got it. Sort of, uh, you know, coming to a shorter lead time. Got it. Got it. I got it. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Opal. Thank you. We also received comments from Matushi, Matushi Roy from Goody Experts. Are you here, Matushi? Yeah, please. PVC beads, no? Okay, okay. Hmm. In that, great, great. Thank you, thank you so much, Matushi. Thanks a lot. And uh, Mr. Ajay Upal. I think we have already addressed yours, yeah. Mr. Parveen Sharma from Saiwana. Are you here, Mr. Parveen? Okay. So he basically talked about, again, sourcing new fabrics, trims, and accessories, and uh, on-time delivery of the samples. And Shalini Taku from Saiwana. Are you here, Shalini? No. Okay. So again, it's talking about uh, insourcing new fabrics and trims. So I think it's a repetition. It's primarily because of uh, mainly the sourcing and the sampling. Uh, Miss Manisha Chabra, Panorama Exports. Are you here? Yes, please. We are having problem with sampling, extreme fit samples and all. Fitting. Facing, uh, facing problem with, basically we are stuck in CAD to huh? create the patterns and all. Yeah, but you are not able to create, create it in CAD? What is it? Uh, it will take long time actually. If you put in pattern for grazing in CAD, it will take long procedure. It will take one, one week. One week to get the patterns from CAD, huh? Okay. Jaspreet Kaur, Merchant Panorama. Are you here, Jaspreet? Yeah? Okay. So you move forward. Pinky, Panorama, Exports. Well, she also shared that sampling execution of new styles, on-time delivery of the samples, and the communication is an issue. Sona Sagar from Indigo Apparel. Sona, are you here? Please, please. Please share your concern. It would be nice. I have some time new fabric of sourcing. Sourcing of new fabrics. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sona. Thanks a lot. So thank you all you guys. Thanks a lot for giving you one more. Upasna Rajput from Panorama. Are you here, Upasna? So I'll read out. She primarily talked about the communication delays that she's facing with the client. 
Okay, so when we, so we're going to address one by one. Primarily, we're going to address the sourcing, sourcing of the fabric, trims, and accessories. So I know it's quite time consuming. I know the cost ends up going up if you have to source it from Turkey, China. Uh, the costing and developing those fabrics in India, I don't know about that, but I can help you finding certain tools. So the face and the pace of the garment industry is completely changed with fiber to fashion. Is anybody using that app already? Yeah, so fiber to fashion is an app. What is happening is it's an app and they have around, it is only for apparel. It is not for uh, uh, any other. So for example, one is Ind India Mart. Have you all heard about India Mart? Have you all heard? So India Mart is catering with textiles and all the other areas as well. But fiber to fashion is dedicated only to textiles. So 356,000 people are already registered here. So what you can do is it's a very, very easy app. You can download it on your phone. And when you go down, what happens is you can just look for, for example, if you write Organdi, you have to look for Organdi fabric. All the suppliers for Organdi fabric will be listed there with their name, with their phone numbers, with their websites. You know, so this is one of the tools which can help you find more suppliers. And you can also find the trims and accessory suppliers. Unfortunately, the beaders, the issue that we're dealing with the beaders, they don't have online presence. As such also, uh, let me go to India, hmm. Mark, hmm. you find more of China suppliers. Mm -hmm. You find very few India suppliers. India suppliers. So people are still not registering, right? Yeah, people are not registering. Hmm. Hmm. So you've not... Maybe they're existing over there. Right. People are going over there. Right. For they don't find it, right, I get that. So fiber to fashion is just textiles. So maybe this can help you find more of Indian because 356 people have already, 356,000 people have already registered there, right? Secondly, what it helps, this particular uh, website, they also help you find buyers, not only suppliers, but the buyers. So they have you special customer care. So one individual, one premier customer gets a customer care help and then you can go and you, they also fix meetings with you for the buyer. So for example, you're traveling abroad, they charge a nominal fees, annual fees, and they help you fix your appointments also with the buyers. Not only that, they give you all the apparel news on your phone. So you have supplier details, the value chains, the top news in the apparel industry that all comes in. It also helps you look for the merchandisers, the production people, you know, you can you, we, all, we all can log into that and see the people looking for jobs as well. So this is one app that helps you find this. Yeah? So this is what we could find for sourcing primarily. You know, the source we can find this. Next, I'm going to move on to sampling. Now, sampling is a big challenge, right? So 30, 35 days is the sampling time. And the problem that we face primarily is the samples are never accepted in one go. The fits are not okay, which we're talking about. And uh, the expenditure to make those samples is very high because we're using fabric, we're using trims, we're doing accessories, the labor is working, and it's exorbitant, right? And then we are, may not have this, we may not be on the same platform of communication. Kaibari, what the buyer is trying to say, what we are understanding, what the labor is understanding is also totally different, right? So uski communication ki wajay se, again, there are a lot of delays that come in. So the tool that we have over here is virtual prototyping. Are we all, any, is anybody using virtual prototyping here? Okay, so these are certain, some of the players in the market, Optitex, I think they already give, Mr. Gill gave a presentation yesterday. Did anybody, does any, did anybody attend that? Yeah, so Optitex, he talked about it yesterday. Then there's Tuka Tech, Tuka 3D, there's Lectra, there's V Stitcher, and there's Gerber. So what happens in prototyping is, what you need to do is, basically you put in all the information, and you have a 3D, 3D body. 3D body shape in which you can put the patterns, you can put the panels and you can see the actual garment on the computer. So how this helps is you have the garment on the computer. So whatever alterations that you need to make, you can make it there and then without making a complete sample. And you can share it with the buyer. They can also see the 3D visual of that particular garment. So a lot of things can be resolved. Within a day, this can be created, sent to the buyer, you can have an approval and then you make a sample. So we're not wasting our time getting the fit approvals. We're not going back and forth for the fit approval. So I'll just tell you how it works primarily. So you obtain the, so this is the, this is the whole procedure. You obtain the style from the buyer, you obtain the specifications and you prepare a virtual model on computer. Then you analyze the fabric because the gabardine will work very different from chiffon, right? So obviously every, gum, every fabric will perform separately and then you have 
develop the pattern with the CAD, then you create a virtual garment with those patterns, then there will be 3D virtual samples which will be created, then you analyze the fit of that sample on the virtual model that you've created, and you can make on the spot alterations, and then you can also see the animated video of that. In the same software, what you can do is you can have a video conferencing with the buyer to view the fit. So you've created, they're also online and you can review, all of you can review the fit. And then if she's on you know, holiday, you know, she's not waiting for the samples to come in the office and then give you approval. You know, sometimes you wait for the fit models. So when I was there in Amsterdam, we had to wait for the fit models on Wednesday only, then only all the size sets will be fitted in. So she's also not doing that. You are also not doing that. So then we're all, you know, we can just make the whole process very quick. So this is, I'm going to show you a video for this, huh? a virtual prototyping, how it works. The process begins in 2 Design, where the pattern maker will open up a block with predetermined grade rules already set on the block. Here I'm selecting a base size 4, and I'm going to load the file directly into 2 3 d The first step is select the fabric, so I'm selecting a denim fabric, and now I'm going to load my fit model. So I go into my library of models, and select the model, and here she is. Now, we begin by selecting the panels and placing them around the body. Notice here I can manually drag the pieces around the body. And then, since these are very big panels, I'm going to curve them around the leg. So I'm putting a bend value. So here I can bend the pieces, and I'm going to take the front panels and do the same. I'm going to bend them, and here I'll take the waistband, put it in position, and I want that to wrap around the body as well. The next step in the process is to electronically sew the pieces together. Here I'm creating stitch lines between the panels. I'm simply selecting the segments and creating the stitch lines. And you notice I can hide the model and that gives me an easier selection of my stitch lines. Now we're entering drape mode. You notice here all the panels have come together and we're applying gravity. This is where all the physical properties of the denim fabric have come together and we can see the final output. Now if you'd like to save this final output into a movie, we can set this up by first uh, lining our camera. You can see we can set our camera position and choose the frame where we want it to start. And I'm going to set up my light scene as well. So here I'm creating my light settings and then I'm going to select what kind of format to save this in. So I select my format, save the file, and I'm going to render this into a 360 degree view. So after I hit render, you will now see in the dialog my 360 degree view final output and this can be saved into an AVI file or a Apple QuickTime MOV file. You notice here my size 4 is a little bit too big on my model. So back in design, I'm going to go to grading. I'm going to switch from size 4 to size 0 and let me close this and now I'm going to simply go to the eFit menu, update my file and the pattern will get loaded from size 4 to size 0 and we repeat the process of draping. We don't have to stitch and we don't have to arrange the pieces, that's all stored in memory. I simply have to redrape and now we can analyze the size 0 compared to the size 4. You can see that it's quite a big difference. This is a much better looking garment. So this is the beauty of the system. If I want to go and see the largest size, I can quickly switch my size. Here I'm going to take the size 12. I'm going to update this to eFit. And again, we are redraping. So now we're going to see the size 12 on the model. So you can load any size, check your grade. You can load any fit model during the process. And you can simply see what this garment is at. The process begins in Tuka Design, where the pattern maker will the body as well. The next step. And you notice I can hide the model, and that gives me an easier selection of my stitch lines. So what did you now, sorry guys, I think there's something.
I'm not able to fix here. Yeah, okay. We start from here. The size zero compared to the size four, you can see that it's quite a big difference. This is a much better looking garment. So this is the beauty of the system. If I want to go and see the largest size, I can quickly switch my size. Here I'm going to take the size 12. I'm going to update this to E-Fit. And again, we are redraping. So now we're going to see the size 12 on the model. So you can load any size, check your grade. You can load any fit model during the process. And you can simply see what this garment is actually going to drape and how the fabric is going to behave. So here is my size 12. This is the final simulation and you can obviously see it's very baggy and very loose. So finally now I'm going to switch back to my base size 4 and I'm going to make a pattern adjustment. So here I'm going to hide my grading and I'm going to update this first back to 3D and now I'm going to increase the inseam length. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my panels and I'm going to add two inches in length. So here I'm going to type in two. And I'm going to update this file. And once the file is updated, we can see that the panels are longer, the hem is longer, and we're going to redrape. So by starting with a digital pattern file, you can really see the power of having 2D and 3D working together. You can Edit your pattern in 2D and see the changes live in 3D. So now you see the drape is finished and the hem is obviously longer. There's something with me and technology, I think. The moment I touch it, it just starts going bad. Next slide. Next slide, okay. Okay, so this is how the digital patterns look like. This is for a skirt and the blouse. We can put the panels on the model, the front and the back panels we have put for the skirt and the blouse, right? So you can see the front view and the rear view. And then you can do the virtual stitching. Yeah, on the side seams, you see the green lines, you can do the virtual stitching on them. This is how the garment looks like. So you can see the exact fit of the garment, the front view, the rear view and the side view. I'm going to go quick. I think we've already done. This is again another set of patterns that we have. So this is how we place it. The back panels. We can put the front panels and we can start doing adjustments as per the requirement. And you can just put all the, we can stitch the panels up. Yeah, you can see all the green stitch lines and the purple stitch lines with the virtual stitching that it's showing. And this is the animated version. You can see the animation of the garment, the way it falls. So this is how it's helpful. It obviously reduces the sampling lead time. It enables the buyers to get the proto samples view within the day. You don't have to send the samples, the actual samples. Then there's less fabric and time wastage due to which the low sampling drop rate, of course. If they can want to drop a style, it can be dropped after looking at the virtual 
sample they don't have to wait for the actual samples and then drop the style and we're not investing much money and time and energy and then quick changes can be made on the virtual samples it obviously helps us get at least first approvals on the fit and before we make the sample till then you can fabric and come in you know at least you know out of those 10 styles we're going out with the seven styles we're not making all the 10 styles we're not wasting our time money and energy in that and then obviously it bridges up the communication gap because we all can be on the same conference uh, call with them and then it builds a virtual fit sessions so now what happens is after this is i'm going to talk about another thing is body scanning human body scanning so what used to happen is the fit models come in over there which are the representative of the target customer right and over here we have dummies so obviously when we fit something on the dummy and then when they fit it on the fit model it's not happening and then they click pictures and they send it to us so sometimes the labor is not even able to understand what are the pictures showing and whatever he interprets that's what we make right so there's something called 3d body scanners also what they can do is they can scan the body of the fit model once you scan the body of the fit model you have the exact measurements you can make a avatar a 3d avatar of that so then again you can make your patterns as per that and put it on that fit model so i'll just show you how this works table which will rotate at a constant speed and you'll stand in place taking the capture the turntable has a non slippery surface it runs at a slow speed for safety and it locks when it's turned off our third method is the most private method the subject will stand on the turntable and the 3D camera will actually be mounted on a stand that tilts as the turntable moves, capturing them. This method, while remaining portable, can be put inside of a fitting room for perfect privacy. Okay. So it's pretty much, we can get the exact measurements, we can make a 3D avatar out of it and put it in. Let's start a capture. Data. First, enter in your subject's name, first and last, as well as other relevant information, like email address, height, and weight. This information will be attached to the capture and go along with it. Then choose the type of capture you're going to do. In this case, we're choosing turntable. Hit continue to see some safety information, some reminders, and then the tablet will show you the subject in its view. Frame the subject, and a skeleton will appear on top of the subject, letting you know that the system has seen them and is ready to start. Have your subject lift their arms. The skeleton will turn green when it's ready to go. Hit continue, and then push start capture to begin the capture. Run the turntable and tilt the tablet up and down to see the whole body as the subject moves in a circle. On the right hand side, you can see the elapsed time that the capture has taken. And in the bottom of the field of view, you can see a, a meter that shows how close and far the subject is from the tablet. Make sure that they're in the green area and not in the red or the black area. Keep tilting until the subject has made a full revolution, and then you can stop the tablet's sensor and the turntable. The typical time of capture is about 40 seconds. When you're finished, you'll have an option to upload. I'll explain this in the next tutorial. So this is what the future is. We need to start adapting technology in order to meet something. Did you hear about 3D printers? Yeah, so those 3D printers now will enable us to actually design our own clothes and even pharmaceuticals sitting on our computer. We'll not be paying by cash anymore. We'll, cash will definitely exist, but we'll be paying everything through our smartphones. So guys, we need this technology to cope up with that kind of technology that those guys are adapting to. You know, we need to just match up to that. And uh, sorry, the other tools which are available in the market, these are again free apps. Fabric GSM calculator, yarn count converter, fabric reconciliation, cut order plan, textile fabric costing, which enables you with small, small things like, you know, uh, you can actually get the fabric costing. You can see the whole planning, the marker planning to save on the cost, then fabric reconciliation to see how, you know, uh, we can save many, much more fabric uh, through our planning and then yarn count converter and obviously GSM calculator for the woven styles. Next is communication. 
we know Zara is doing so well. Why is Zara doing so well? Because of the communication in between, right? They're getting all the information from the customer, from all those 400, 256 stores. They get all the information together and then they give it to the designers and they're spending 69% of the total uh, expenditure on line development. Then it's, it's given to sourcing and within 15 days the products are developed and they're sent to the stores, right? So it's all possible, obviously through technology and through great, great communication skills within the organization and outside the organization. To build any relationship, trust, to build any business, I think the core is communication. Am I right? For, you know, for everything in our life, communication is everything, right? Any miscommunication or no communication can lead to a lot of troubles. So I'll ask Deepak to continue from here, yeah? You take it up for the tools for communication, yeah? Okay. Thanks, Deepak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And Karthik, thank you so much for doing our introduction. And uh, Shilpa, you have given a superb start, uh, especially when we all were talking about uh, the, the new trends that are there when we are talking about merchandising around. What I will do is, I will take it slightly on a level of enterprise. And from there, I am coming. Uh, in all my 14 years, uh, when I worked in India or abroad, when I worked for IT companies or non-IT companies, when we were doing the enablement also, there was something which was always common. And the common point was this communication only. Where now also, you know, when I set up my three different ventures, uh, if I look at myself, I am more into process consulting mode all the time. And better than those big four consultants who would come with a great plan but with no implementation around it or the ones who are really very strong with the implementation but always have a question mark on their face how to make it happen. What is the typical blueprint around? So I will try my best that whatever time we have that uh, if I can give that kind of a blueprint by sharing certain instances that how it is done when we are talking at enterprise level. Let me ask this question. How many of you are heading business units? or involved in strategic decision making or been fired for that all the time <laughs> or when we are talking about different areas uh, something like you know I was I was listening to uh, some issues and concerns that when uh, shall pass this question that what are the typical issues that we always have someone uh, raised a voice by saying we have to be proactive and then it was like you know right first time in fact it was right first time and every time that's what Philip, Philip Crosby taught, taught me at least. Uh, or if we are talking about uh, the efficiency level, that is again one of the voice that I could hear. At the same time, looking at uh, when, we were, when we displayed the concerns that we got online, it was all in all getting into three uh, brackets. One is about outsourcing, which is getting outdated. Sorry, uh, sourcing, which is getting outdated. Or it is not happening real time or when there was like the pricing issues also around or looking at meeting buyers timeline now the interesting thing is when I was going through you know all the issues and listening to everyone I can tell you I thought something else to start with communication in however I will be taking slightly the strategic management view first take it like this what any promoter would expect from you or at the same time what uh, the representative from client side would expect from you where as Indians we big time lack because of which we have almost you know going Pareto principles way we are getting uh, our 80 percent problems from that side only the first problem is of attitude of zero or hundred percent thanks to our or, or not so thanks to our education system we've been taught how to get promoted to next class at 60% 70 80 90 and 100 as well my dear friends that's the issue in communication also we do it with the mindset it is not 100% however we have this wishful thinking always around that we are putting our 100% why because instinctively we are not machine friendly for that matter all the instances videos that Shilpa showed in fact I, I also have a couple of videos to share with you I have yet to th see how many videos are done by Indians 
at the same time we all are talking about apps and all how many apps are actually built by indians none at the same time how many indian export houses have their apps now let us take it on global level how many international export houses do not have apps that is the gap the gap comes with the mindset the belief structure the belief structure in itself in itself is about instinctively we are the users we are not the creators so you guys create we will follow you guys give the set norms as a blueprint also we will follow and then all these issues just crop up and i am very keen to discuss such a certain issues with the group because i could see a good blend of senior executives and as well as entry level uh, professionals also in this in this group so when i'm talking about all enterprise level of smart merchandising my dear friends we have to take this into consideration that at least from today onwards let us swear this to ourselves out of this workshop that for sure we would go with 0% or 100% mindset so either we will do it or we will not do it and that was that is only possible when instinctively wish we all will become friendly to machines to give interesting example i worked for all 14 plus years in technology side as a non engineer guy i am an economist otherwise with my first qualification but all in all all the it guys wanted me to go and talk to the clients including some couple of apparel clients if i talk about marks and spencer ucb coles go and talk to them and look what are their concerns where we can now help them by way of it solutions all in all because especially we guys we guys get scared of the moment we talk of technology because we are not techies right so as merchandisers you are the users of technology but you are not techies and that's what scares you away from any technology so second point what i what i'm trying to make is no one wants you to become techy however what is been expected is that at least become technology enabled for that matter we are talking about smart digital merchandising you have to make yourself smart digital merchandising enabled now you have a strong relevance and context to look at apps the way you know if armani would visit india the guy would go to interiors of rajasthan to do sourcing but how many of you we would be aware of it the guy is not the armani so he is going there and then looking at the uh, the most popular sourcing destinations however the guy would get into our country discover new sourcing destinations and after a while that will become a trend all in all because the enablement is that i have to do everything by using technology not it, it is not making me techy at all but i'm just using technology the way smart digital merchandising will happen when i will make this attitude that i want to use it not i've been compelled to use it only then you know we will be able to come out of all these issues that you know we we just mentioned about at the same time when we are talking about enablement there are certain points at the corporate level where the platforms are available also say if i ask you this question how many of you understand what is e procurement don't tell me no one knows about it i don't believe this okay hmm I think the the pen drive is not working right now in this one. Do you want this one? No, I'm just that I just want to have how okay, it is. So, it is more to do the sourcing part, right? But have we have we ever used e-procurement to enable real-time communication? 
Will it really help there? But you know what? Mechanically, I can tell you all the transactions that one can do. However, there's a larger objective whenever you get into any of these enterprise-wide applications. In fact, today, I will try to touch upon a couple of those enterprise applications also that normally scares, scares us big time. Uh, and then I will try to relate them with the social media enablement. I'm sure, you know, we all are users of social media, but how well we are able to use social media for our respective work functions. There's one, uh, there's a, this small video. Don't go by the company name. Just look at that how the process of procurement normally is taken forward. Ariba Collaborative Sourcing lets you leverage the world's largest business network to help buyers and suppliers collaborate better, improve compliance, and enhance efficiency across your source and bid to contract processes. Because effective supplier discovery and information management are critical for the sourcing process, Ariba Sourcing offers best-in-class sourcing and negotiation technology that enables you to identify and qualify suppliers. Why I am sharing this video with all of you, that you will realize that most of your clients have this mindset when they are interacting with you. So as the steps, what Shilpa covered is more on the hands-on way. This is more on the business side of looking at digital merchandising. Discover new sources of supply, plan projects and execute sourcing events by leveraging patented sourcing technologies, market intelligence and best practice expertise award and negotiate best value agreements and capture knowledge throughout the entire life cycle. This single integrated strategic sourcing platform makes it easy to create sourcing projects, maintain a complete and up-to-date list of associated tasks and documents, collaborate with internal and external stakeholders, track correspondence, maintain a complete audit log of all actions, and efficiently manage the project all from a single location. Utilizing the solution's comprehensive project dashboards, you're not only able to effortlessly manage and execute events, but also improve bid competitiveness using Ariba Discovery, which provides access to over 1 million suppliers across 20,000 product categories in 115 countries. As the most widely used strategic sourcing platform in the world, Ariba Sourcing also offers the ability to create and analyze various sourcing scenarios and derive optimal award allocations. With Ariba's collaborative business network, not only the buyers, but also the suppliers see value. To help suppliers compete more effectively and find buyers ready to buy, Ariba enables you to seamlessly manage proposals, participate in online sourcing events, and respond quickly and efficiently to buyers' requests. Utilizing Ariba's streamlined bidding process, you can review event details, respond to buyer prerequisites, select lots, and submit a response, all with just a few simple clicks. To help your business realize shorter deal cycle times, achieve better compliance, and ensure zero leakage, Ariba provides 100% paperless contracting functionality that enables organizations to author, track, manage, and validate contracts of all types, procurement, internal, and sales contracts. With access to pre-approved clause and template libraries, you can save time by automating and streamlining contract creation, as well as collaborate with internal departments, such as legal, using the contract collaboration workspace. The solution also enables you to effectively manage tasks, such as legal review, with the ability to drill down, send required documents, and configure the approval flow. Throughout the contracting process, Ariba captures all associated messages and compiles a complete history of all activities to provide an audit trail for compliance. With Ariba's collaborative business network, not only the buyers, but also the suppliers see value. 
to close more deals faster, achieve greater efficiency, and lower administrative costs. Ariba provides feature-rich web-based contract management software that allows organizations to standardize processes, eliminate paper, and monitor every stage of the sell-side contract lifecycle. With robust and flexible process workflows, Ariba automates contracting, negotiation, and approval tasks, and streamlines contract creation with pre-approved contract templates and clauses. With secure electronic storage and instant anytime access, Ariba provides a central repository that facilitates seamless processing and ongoing compliance. Ariba not only keeps you informed throughout the contract cycle with an intuitive dashboard and automatic alerts, but also allows you to connect directly with customers to see how you're performing and take decisive action to improve relationships and achieve higher value agreements. Ariba's well, I will I will share two points here by taking two instances. One instance that is from your uh, industry itself, which is more to do with sourcing. Uh, I think someone from here asked about that the bidding uh, bidding is is a is a problem, and especially when we are looking for how to source them. Now, take take this example for a while, or this this case for a while. That is it not an issue with everyone? especially the, the international segment also, those who have no clues about what beats to get from India. Now the smart way is out here that at that local source, create those focus groups, train them and give them the enablement to bid. That's you know what we guys did by using this software in, in one of my engagements. Because the idea that time was that how well you know we can improvise the quality of sourcing. Vis-a-vis -vis another client, Tata Motors, they used the similar platform to launch Nano under the price bracket of 100,000 rupees. So their business objective was not to bring efficiency in procurements, while their business objective was to look for least cost country sourcing. The way for bidding, the group can be created give them the access and bring them online with you so that right from contract to negotiation to the engagement, you can have effective quality control also. And this is how, as I said, the organization said. You guys tried? We can always try. Yes, yes. See, uh, when I mentioned about Armani, that's what he did. You think he himself would be uh, doing QC every time? But the guy came. See, the thing is... Uh, mm -hmm. Take it like this, you're into, into premium segment, right? And uh, there, if you're getting into uh, beating areas where you want to ensure quality over cost, this is a one-time activity. Once that is being done, then you are now f fetching more results. Like, one visit of our money is enough. Now the sourcing can be taken care of because a group has been created, but has, it has not been created in some Jaipur of Rajasthan, but in some village of Rajasthan. So when we are going with those business objectives, that's where the e-procurement and such digital B2B merchandising would come handy to you. Just that, especially in our country, you have to first do a training lot. And that's what we did when, you know, when we were into procurement assignments with a couple of our clients. So there first we trained Indian suppliers that how to use such platforms because very much like all of us, they are also scared of it. While, again, interesting thing was that we all mentioned about China and other countries. Why we are able to source things so easily from there? Is it because they really have good quality? Answer is no. The reality is that they are more enabled to do sourcing online. Vis-a-vis -vis in our country again. So these are, you know, like the mental, mental blocks that, you know, let us try to break today itself. Supplier information and performance management is an advanced system that enables you to track events, view supplier metrics, and access reports with ease through a flexible, configurable dashboard. In addition to providing a wealth of information at a glance, the dashboard also enables you to drill down into a comprehensive Supplier 360 report that offers an inclusive view of suppliers, complete with a commodity spend analysis, a performance trending report, submitted bids, active contracts, and much more. 
Leveraging the power of the Ariba network, suppliers can save time, improve accuracy, and dramatically increase efficiency using the unified seller dashboard. By maintaining a single source of the truth for supplier information, it enables seamless transfer of information to all participating buyers throughout the network. By providing a unified experience for both buyers and sellers, Ariba enhances processes, improves collaboration, and simplifies commerce. And with all these benefits, Ariba Collaborative Sourcing is a key part of your journey toward becoming more efficient, more compliant, and better collaborators with the help of the world's largest business network. Ariba Collaborative Sourcing lets you leverage the world's largest business network to help buy when we talk of enterprise-wide solutions, especially in B2B area, these are the typical solutions used by organizations. I'm not sure how many of you are actually users of ERP. Are, is anyone in this group? Okay, great, great. CRM, Supply Chain Management, SCM. Okay, there are two, all right. Now, this is something uh, which could really scare you, which is data warehousing and business intelligence. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, all these are solutions used by big, big uh, buyers. All in all, because they have a reason for it. Now, the reason is not technology, by the way. The reason is, I shall have B DW, BI, to ensure what color to launch next season, UCB. So there is a bigger business impact out there. Similarly, when we all are using ERP, CRM and all, are we really able to give, now a typical way, you know, we always say that how well we are able to convert that data, which normally we get from it, from any source, into information. And that information will give us what? Knowledge. The knowledge will give us what? Wisdom. And that wisdom will give us intelligence to come up with plan of action. Now, why I give you this total gyan? Reason was, when we all talk about real time, do we have that kind of a plan for ourselves in place? Think for a while. You want to, like, we all agree that we should have real time communication? Do we all agree to it? Yeah, we all agree to it. Now, let us see what should be step number one. I think that's where we all get stuck. Because intent is there, but implementation of that intent is a challenge. So if we have to look at real time, I say real time, you also say real time. So I would take this or I shall take this as first step. What should that be? Anyone. Or if you have already uh, taken those initiatives in your organization. I'm sure we all wait for it until it is not coming from buyer side. Yes or no? <laughs> so let us today try to go out with plan of action also. That as we go back, let us take the initiative and get it incorporated into our buyer strategy. So not them, we will ensure real-time communication. And here, you know, there's, there's this, this interesting story also of uh, how one Japanese company was engaged by one U.S. company. And they said, you know what, we are all fine with, but uh, in, you know, 10,000, we would give you scope of, uh, you know, we, we could give, give scope of four defects. And the Japanese, when they, when they delivered the consignment, they said, I don't understand, you know, like how you, we go to guys don't understand how you Americans do business as you want it. Here are 10,000 pieces and here are the defective pieces also. We have manufactured them also with defects. Same way, when we are working on zero or 100% mindset, that is the idea. There is no problems ever in communication. The problem is created. It's a created problem all the time and we know very well. There could be, you know, one of the flaws. In fact, it is there in my subsequent slides also. In short, you know, we call it PPIT. Either the flaw is from people, first P, or process, second P, or I, infrastructure, or T, technology. So maybe there was a technology glitch that somewhere impacted it. So when we always know, there, you know, we have to give it a double coat of insulation that there shall not be any issues around 
real time communication. So, how to make it happen? Couple of benefits of any enterprise solution is not technology, again I will repeat, but what benefits out of the technology that you are able to get. We all work on scheduling of workflow, that is the first benefit where it becomes better. Then at the same time, supplier, buyer, both working on business objective, which has to go very well with the analytics around. By analytics, we mean from data to the stage of plan of action. Same way, when we are looking at delivery schedule, I think we somewhere are taking care of turnaround time, the lead time overall, looking at the SLAs to be confirmed, and then to look at the deviations around. That's where it would again help when you are clear with that enterprise application. And this is how you know you should evaluate also any package. If you are if you're in keen, if you're really keen to uh, source and, and want to implement in your organizations. We always go with multi-vendor scenario. So is multi-location and so is the different stages around. So there, there should be a full control that gets enabled very well. At the same time, communication is not just about with clients. And I think that is not uh, we look for as such. But on the surface, that's where we always see an issue, that we have issues with clients. The fact is we have issues with clients because we have issues with other stakeholders. Because of which we could not even deliver on time or we were not able to enable it on time to happen. And then the client issue comes into picture. So uh, the root cause may not be the client issue. The root cause is somewhere again in PPIT because of which the client issue would come. So if we have to ensure better communication, it should be internal first with different stakeholders. By default, there won't be any complaints from clients. So there are certain more which are more uh, uh, conformance wise where it would again enable. So of course, one is the audit compliances. At the same time, the working will happen boundaryless and departmentless. So no department would work in silo with their own data backup and data and their own legacy around, but it would be more like the seamless flow will be around. That could be put very well on MIS, more in terms of giving that management information system that could enable management to take decisions. And then of course, are these applications for your industries? Answer is yes. There are so many organizations, or I would say at least international ones, global ones, they all are either on all enterprise applications or at least one of them. So how to make it happen? If we have to blend the enterprise application with the social media approach, because this will be the step number one, which was totally in your control also, we have to simply follow the six C's around. I will show you this slide, don't get scared. It is, these are the six C's we have to work on. Very first thing is, what concept you are engaged in. By concept we mean that what is your business area you are operating in. And there comes your JD, which is the context. Now when that context has been implemented, when you know are very clear with that, you know, uh, my context is either in sourcing side or in display side or in XYZ areas. What are the typical content areas I work on? And ladies and gentlemen, in this entire C-suite, I'm not talking technology at all. But I can tell you, it would happen only by way of technology. Something like, if I give you a cross-industry example, uh, when we guys go to buy a car, how many times first we do automobile engineering? But we all know what to buy, right? Because we are very clear with that. Same way, we all are users of technology. So we don't have to understand technology. We have to understand what we will get out of that technology. So that is where C-Suite is enabling it. So getting into the content side and then it will come the communication, which you have to in-house incorporate in a way that its coverage should happen again, either BU wise, geography wise, stakeholder wise, or your product category wise. So that there should be the established credibility, the way we feel so great about taking our buyer's name, isn't it? When we talk about any global buyer, we have that proud. That is the C credibility. Because consciously, they have implemented C-suite approach in their work function. Needless to say, that would give you by default expansion. So, how to do it? The sandwiched content 
which is starting right from articles to blogs to white papers to pictures, getting into SEO side, social bookmarking. These are the areas that would ensure that you are able to put the work function in place. How it is working? It will work as step number one that you have to be very clear with that you need to develop that machine mindset. Uh, how many of you have worked abroad? Okay. What is the last thing you would ever see on roads? Don't say garbage, but otherwise. Human beings. Isn't it? Unlike in our country, that's the first thing you will always see. So not that uh, the buyers are so much about uh, machines. The thing is, they have no other option but to make it technology enabled. Unlike we guys, you know, we can just phone anyone, we could reach out to anyone. There is no as such human beings around where, you know, they could collaborate easily. And that is why they are the best guys to develop all these solutions. So when you are interacting with them, very basic example, you know, I can share with you. When I first, you know, visited US uh, and when I started working there, for me, leaving a message on answering machine used to be a challenge because I was conditioned not to leave. Like how many of us actually leave in our country voice messages? Only those, you know, who are expats or who are, who are NRIs, only they use voicemail in India. But there, it's a norm. And it's a norm going about giving the full presentation of 5 minutes, 10 minutes on voicemail. Because for them, it's not a machine at all. For them, it's a medium. So if I want to buy a pack of chips, there's a vending machine. If I want to get into my uh, complex, here's an access card. So no one will open that gate for me. Or if I'm getting into my office, my lift would have access card that would only stop at my floor. And when I'm getting into reception, there's no one to welcome me. But there would be a one virtual receptionist where I would have to punch in my details. The card will get printed, put it on your, on, on, on your, uh, on your sleeve or on your uh, collar and go inside. And then you would suddenly see one human being around with whom you have come to interact. So they are tuned that ways to use technology. Not that they understand technologies because all these technologies, by the way, are developed by we guys only. But they are very strong with PPIT. That what they expect. Now they would say, I need C++, I want .NET, I want J2E, or I want Android guy, I want, you know, XYZ technical skill set guy. So when we are working to incorporate in, in our organization, that is the very first step, that you have to think with that machine as a medium. Do not think, oh, it's just a machine, leave it. Only then digital tools will help you. So what Shilpa presented about all those digital tools, you really think that you can work on them by not having machine mindset? Stitching virtually, fitting virtually, doing scanning again virtually. So not that, no one would ask you, tell us the configuration of this 3D box. But at least one would ask how to use it. So all that would happen when this step one, as a belief structure, you are able to incorporate in your departments. Then comes step two, build communities around. Let me ask you this question. How many of you are engaged with your buyers somewhere on some social media for forum? Okay, turn your heads and see how many hands are raised. Not even one fourth. Other than business or other than requirements, you have nothing else to talk to them. I'm not saying that become personal. But is there any forum where you are engaged with them, where you are talking about subject matter expertise, industry trends, fashion trends, buying trends, buying criteria, proposing system? Answer is no. This is why where now digitally you need to enable it. And is it like rocket science? Answer is no. Why? Because this will be more driven by thoughtfulness, not by investment. So the only investment if you have to do is your of your intellect, of your smart ways that if my buyer is there, so Mr. Buyer, if not SOW, scope of work, what else I can talk to you? Nothing. 
while if you are able to do it some type of as i said the trending side and the other areas now you have the second c of c suite context to talk to them and i tell you all these international buyers if you don't believe me go on certain social mediums you would see that they themselves are running their forums very basic tool linkedin go there and type fashion designers sourcing guys buying houses you would find so many groups around but then before that let me ask another question as a step back how many of us are using linkedin other than job search <laughs> when we think you know like uh, good at least few of you are actually using it other than job search so am i doing linkedin or i am on linkedin more to build my subject matter understanding or to look into business concepts around or to build my understanding of geographies like as i said you know here also i have written lccs which is least cost country sourcing which tata use big time to produce nano now do we understand that which are the lccs destinations across globe if yes for which material who are the decision makers there are they there in your profiles as connect now here you have a ready made pool data that could be now used to build content around so this is what you know is step number 2 step number 3 is there are certain in fact many now uh, online freely really available collaborative tools because one thing that i have heard so many times because i am coming from social media background also i have heard this so many times that we want to do it but i am not sure we are not sure if we will be able to get budgetary approval is that what we also face now the interesting thing is budgetary approval is the second step like i also do it you know when any of my clients or my team would ever ask me you know what we need budgets i say give me the plan and take the budget but then we guys would go with now we will start with plan when you give us budget so if we are able to use certain tools which are available online and free at least we can showcase a kind of a poc proof of concept or a pilot that would really enable or reckon get reckoned by the promoters that you know what yeah it is working we should go ahead with more investment in this initiative something like are we like how many of us are using google documents google drive how much it cost you okay is it not real time it is real time but then we would still go with the same trail emails to do follow ups yes or no the only thing is we have not experimented with it so this is something where i thought let me show you a small video maybe step number 3 go back implement i am not getting any commission out of it and so are you not paying anything for it but the only thing is it will surely make communication real time by the way this is a logo you would see when you go on google.com and it's a free apps again you can download it and that would get sync with all your mails and your contacts also so if by ever unfortunately if you lose your mobile phone still you would have full backup of your contacts drive is an excellent tool for collaborating on google docs projects and other files because everything is stored in the cloud there's no need to email files back and forth instead another thing the form on which you gave us your issues that was google form by the way we guys in principle decided not to use paper at all and we decided we shall not exchange any emails also so it was done all online so that form that you filled was actually a google doc and we all got real time information and how much we spent nothing only time and efforts and you can work on the exact same document with anyone you want all the other person needs is a google account of their own To get started, select the file you want to share using the checkbox on the left. Then click the share button. Here you have several different options. First, I'm going to show you how to share your file one-on-one -on -one with people you know. 
All you have to do is look for the box that says Add People, then start typing the addresses of the people you want to share with. Next, click the drop-down arrow to the right to control whether they can edit, comment on, or just view the file. Remember, only files in Google Docs format can be edited online by different people. An interesting thing is this editing is so real-time, say a very basic example if I take. Say we guys are working on some Excel sheet. If X person would make change, by default it would get reflected there itself, to me also. And if we both are working, it is still be visible that, you know, wait, the guy is working. It is so damn real time. I'm happy with this option, so I'm going to go ahead and click Add Message, then type a note to my friends. By default, the people you share with have the ability to change the permissions on the file. That means they can invite new people to view or even collaborate on it. If that's something you'd rather avoid, click the Change link at the bottom of the window, then choose the option that says only the owner can change the permissions. When you're happy with your settings, go ahead and click Share and Save. And your friends will be added to the list of people who have access. Another way to share files in Drive is to provide a link, one that anyone can use to access the file, even if they don't have a Google account. This can be especially useful for files that are too large to send as an email attachment, like a video or a photo album. To share a link, start by following the same steps as before. This time, however, we're going to click Change next to the first item on the list. Here you can change your visibility options. Just click Anyone with the link, then the Save button to continue. The original dialog box will reappear with a link that you can share on social media sites or just copy and paste. Now you can send this link in an email, for example, or post it on your blog. It's important to use good judgment with this method, though. Even if you share the link with only a few people, there's a chance anyone could find it online. So just to be safe, never use a link to share anything personal, sensitive, or private. I have one more tip when it comes to sharing files in Google Drive. It has to do with files that other people share with you. You'll always find them in the folder called Shared With Me. However, you could lose access to these files at any time if the owner of the file decides to unshare it with you. If you have a shared file that you want to keep permanently, not to worry, there's a solution. All you have to do is drag and drop it to the link that says My Drive. You could also drag and drop it to one of your folders. Now the file is saved to your drive. You'll always have access to it even if the owner decides to unshare it. So how does sharing work? Let's take a look at some of the things you can do in Google Docs. So, how many of us are not using smartphone as yet? Because I wanted to ask how many of you are using smartphone, then I thought let me flip the question. How many of us are not using smartphone as yet? So just one or two, right? We all are using. And how many of us, like, you know, you know let's say you go back, you create your Google Drive of your department or of your team, you know, based on your title. And see the difference where you are now able to work collaboratively. Interesting things, you don't have to check your emails again and again. Second, there will be no duplication of work. Third, for sure you would know if your team is really working or they have cooked the information at the last moment because it tracks time also and any time you can generate report also out of it. And now again I will say how much you are paying for it and this is your step towards making yourself real time enabled. You can work on a document with more than one person at a time. This feature is great for work, school, even planning a potluck dinner, like in this example. Drive will let you know who else is working on the file with you, so there's no need to pass revisions back and forth. You can also leave comments, for example, to give someone feedback, ask a question, or start a dialogue. To add a comment, just select the text you want to comment on, then right-click, and choose Comment. Your comment will appear on the right. This is also where you'll see comments from other people. So, now that you know how it works, what do you want to share in Google Drive? Maybe a spreadsheet? A presentation? There's so much you can do when you start collaborating, so make sure you give it a try. Is it not easy to use? Simple to use also? And I think all of us now have our Gmail IDs 
And the, now the interesting thing is, along with Gmail IDs, you can add your company ID, your corporate IDs also with it. So it is like so much enabled, not just on the personal email IDs, but at the same time on the corporate IDs as well, at the same time. Uh, which of the companies do not have intranet in this group? Intranet, where you get all internal communication, including HR, including submission of your leaves and everything. Okay, but most of you have used it. Internally, you must be having some kind of a system in place. There is new kind of uh, messenger which is available now only for corporate users, and that is Yammer. Any Yammer user in this group? Yammer is totally strict to the corporate domains. So if you want to create your group also, you have to be a professional first. And this is all in all to help people to save their investment in creating their own messengers. So again, it is very, like there are so many such tools. I can tell you more, there are more than in fact 65 such different tools available online that could really th make things easy. Step number fourth that I mentioned in, uh, initially also that now you have to ensure that how well you are able to have PPIT in your organization. So the one you know who said uh, first time, right first time, someone said that right from this side. Okay, so as I said, you know, make it right first time and every time. So a couple of, you know, like Japanese uh, QC laws also where, you know, we have like 5S principle and then, you know, we have uh, Kaizen principle also. What these guys work on? Like we clean the dirt, isn't it? We all clean the dirt. What these guys clean? They clean the clean. That's a mindset. That's the attitude. So similarly, when you are working on PPIT framework, blending it with the C-suite, the idea is that clean the clean. The idea is that conform in a way that you should be right, not just first time, but every time. In a way that you are able to take it forward in jargonish terms, you know, we call it institutionalization of process. So that is the stage you would reach and that's the stage where most of your buyers have already reached. That is why for them it is very easy to do any IT implementation. So we will not be going in detail about it, but yes, these are the very simple steps, you know, that's what we guys were thinking, what a good takeaway, you know, we can give. So at least now you would know, go back first, build the belief structure of machine. Then at the same time, start using Google Docs around. At the same time, get into tools like Yammer, at least these are like totally doable on your own and devise the kind of a business objective around it and just take it forward. And that's what you know what I want to, to discuss also. All the very best. If there are any questions, you can ask me. There was only one video I wanted to show. The video is quite long by the way. But I wanted you to hear that how buyers respond when they are looking for real-time collaboration. So I will not play the complete video. I will just play it for five minutes. Uh, later on, on uh, you know, if we have all the email IDs, we can share the URL. Uh, you know, you can go back to YouTube and you can watch this entire video. Please join me in welcoming Dave Maley to Ariba Live. Thank you. These are the guys who take all buying decisions, by the way. Or they are the ones who implement PPIT that then get drilled down to each level. Hello, Ariba Live. Thank you for that welcome. It is great to be here. Isn't it? I mean, for all of us, it's great to be here. Great that we get to be in a room like this with all this procurement knowledge. So I'll tell you, yesterday was fabulous, wasn't it? The keynote speakers, the breakout sessions, the networking last night was a lot of fun. And today promises to be just as good, beginning right here. Soon enough, we'll be back at the office, and uh, your boss may well ask, well, what'd you learn? Was it worth it? So I put some nuggets in this presentation here that'll help you there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to share with you the people, process, and technology of our strategic sourcing. Now, the interesting thing is this guy's talking same language. The way we use cross-functional teams, 
and our sourcing process and Ariba upstream and downstream. I'll also talk for a little bit about business cases because I know many of you are building a business case or perhaps you have some Ariba functionality and are looking to expand it. And then finally, I want to focus on the innovative use of the Ariba network and mobile technology that we've developed along with Ariba that really fits the theme here of enabling the business of tomorrow today. By the way, he's not a technology guy. He's a chief procurement officer of Colts. And see his understanding of technology. You all know Coles. I know many of you love Coles, right? It's a, it's a great place to shop. We've grown from our Midwest roots to now 1,158 stores in 49 states, 140,000 employees, corporate office in Wisconsin. So if you get tired of this desert heat, come on back with me. I think we got about another month's worth of ice fishing. So, <laughs> and, you know, a lot of national brands, private brands, exclusive brands, as we said in the intro. Here's the full brand matrix, a lot of, uh, of icons that you recognize. And I guess what, what should resonate so well for, for this procurement audience about Kohl's is the deal that you get, right? The value that you get for your money at Kohl's. Because, you know, the, the regular prices are very competitive. But then when you walk around a Kohl's store, something's always on sale. And then they'll send you discount coupons in the mail. You know what I'm talking about? The peel to reveal. So you peel it off and you say extra 15% off or extra 20% off or ah, there's my 30% off. So then you get to the checkout and they give you Kohl's cash. It's like they're paying you to shop. You know? <laughs> so then there's a few times each year where we can share friends and family discount coupons, which is an extra 20% off. And that turns out to be this weekend. So we're all friends here now, right? So I brought along a big stack of friends and family coupons for, for everybody that will distribute at, uh, be on your lunch table today. So make use of that. I hope, uh, thank you. In fact, take one back for your boss. That'll start that was it worth it conversation off really well, right? So, okay, enough of that. Well, let me tell you about our strategic sourcing team. Our mission is straightforward. We help Kohl's professionally manage spend, right? We help Kohl's professionally manage spend. It's, it just begs the question, what do you mean by professionally managed spend, right? I mean, I thought you purchasing guys just wanted cost savings. And, and it certainly is that. We generate a lot of hard savings and cost avoidance. Uh, but it's, as I said in the intro, about performance metrics and protecting the company. We are what you'd call a center-led, center of excellence org structure. Align the teams to support all the major areas of spend within the company. And as Rachel said, in addition to sourcing, uh, we manage the distribution of supplies to all the stores. This gives us a lot of diversity so we can have rotational growth opportunities and move people from area to area. I'm so sorry I have to stop it here itself because of paucity of time. But what I will do is, if we have, like, you know, okay, let's do one thing. Let's submit this to ourselves. Let's create a Google Doc. And there I will share this link with everyone. So anytime, you know, you can, you can watch it. At the same time, you can have these presentations also from our site. Good enough? Okay. Thank you so much. And over to you, Shilpa. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Are we tired? Just too much technology, too much happening in our heads, right? Okay, so thank you so much. You've been really, really, really great audience. We had a blast conducting this uh, workshop. We had fun. I'm sure you all have had fun too. Any questions that you want to address, uh, we'll be very happy to answer them. So we have the session now open to any questions um, that any of you have. There was this one question which came by somebody who's using virtual prototyping. So let me only tell you. So their concern was we cannot hand feel the fabric. You know, the only concern. So there was one thing which I found for them was this. I thought maybe I can show that to you. If any other questions, please feel free to ask. So this is something which is coming up. I thought maybe. Here, please, please ask. Hi, 
I have a very basic and Touch and gesture interaction has become a standard interface in mobile Sorry. phones, tablets, and desktop computers. However, interactions have yet to provide feedback. Yes, Though you have taken enough pains to explain about Google Docs, you know, right. still there are many apprehensions, you know, back in the mind, kindly try to dispel them in terms of the privacy and security. Because time and again during the demo also, you know, it was been to talked about that uh, if not done this way, it becomes, it goes into public domain, stuff like that. So can you please Great. be I more think, explicit? Uh, uh, I'm happy that you asked this question. Maybe you saved the best question for the last. Uh, it is very obvious, you know, none of these collaborative uh, forums or platforms work without security. So it has its own limited access and it is being driven by the administrator. So if you're the moderator, you would give the right say if I am a part of the, your Google uh, forum. You would give me access to edit or just to view. And anytime, you know, you can restrict that also. Very much like, let me you know, take another cross social media example. On Facebook, it is totally up to you if your updates are being seen by friends, friends of friend or public. So there is like a security mechanism out there as well. And if still someone is really bugging you, you can block that person forever. Yeah. Same out here as well. All these Google Docs are totally safe. Not just Google. Any mm -hmm. collaborative uh, uh, forum like. or any medium that is there, it is totally safe. Just that you have to define rules out there. It will give you all the options. Yeah. This I hope I have answered your question. Like, yeah. Yeah. It comes to better understanding of it. Yes, it? yes. Yeah. Anything else? This is what it looks like. I mean, I can't think about without working with these talks for anything, you know, for any anything that I do. We generally have a Google Sheet and then everybody is putting information in that. It just makes life much more simpler. Well, with technology, there's another drawback. We're looking at carbon footprints now. Obviously, we're producing a lot of carbon dioxide when we're making a garment or a poly bag. So let's all be concerned about the environment along with technology which comes with it, and nowadays we can actually calculate how much carbon dioxide is being produced with one particular garment, right? So that all we can calculate just for your information. So, and I'm sure all the buyers are now moving towards that direction also. That was one thing which I thought I'll share with you. So uh, coming back to the thing that you can't touch and feel the fabric, so this is something which is, was there. I thought I'll share this with you. We are coming up with this technology as well where you will be able to touch, touch and, and feel gesture the interaction well. has become a standard interface in mobile phones tablets, and desktop computers. However, interactions have yet to provide feedback relating the rich spatial dimensionality of the world to touch surfaces. We present a novel tactile rendering algorithm for simulating three-dimensional geometric features on flat touch screen surfaces. We determined a psychophysical model that then relates the perceived frictional force to the applied voltage. Applying this model, we can calculate the precise voltage necessary to generate any desired frictional force between the user's finger and the surface. Our algorithm offers to enhance user interaction with both image and video. It can enhance a variety of spatial information with tactile feedback relating to form and surface topography. For example, users interacting on a touchscreen device can receive depth and elevation information when interacting with navigational maps, three-dimensional renderings, as well as projections on interfaced surfaces. Environmental settings can also be rendered in real time, allowing users access to inaccessible spaces and surfaces and providing information to the visually impaired about their immediate surroundings. The algorithm's functionality can be easily incorporated into emerging friction and touch-based interfaces allowing for new and engaging tactile user experiences. Yeah. So any other questions that you all have related to uh, prototyping or anything that you're looking at? Yeah? Anything? Yeah? Nothing. So I think we're done. All right. <laughs> Thank All you. Right. Thank you so much. Okay.